Alright guys, so we're going to go through and uh, we've got three videos today um, and I'm having a bit of issues with my PC so I might have to do a bit of a format um, so yeah, hopefully not, but let's see how we go so basically guys, what we're going to do is we're going to go through we're going to talk about first one is, uh, is kind of scary second one is just funny and the third well, it's a hypocrite so we'll jump into it but yeah, uh, so both every 5th of November, generally without fail, I'll go through and I'll watch a movie called V for Vendetta. If you haven't seen it, it is an amazing movie, especially with what's going on at the moment. You definitely need to go and see this movie, especially if you like your political action films. I won't spoil it, but yeah, great movie. Um, now, there's a very good scene in that where V is basically going through... And he gives a speech. Now, it's not really a spoiler because it happens in the first 10 minutes of the show. So, you get the idea. Um, so, you're going to see it generally if you haven't seen the movie anyway within the first 10 minutes. It's not really a spoiler. I won't ruin the ending for you. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to watch that because it has some really good, interesting parallels with what's currently happening around the world at the moment. And, and then we're going to talk about some of the scary stuff, including the the who supposedly wanting to come into people's homes to remove infected family members. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not real keen on the government going through, coming into my house to possibly remove mum and dad or pop or grandma or whoever it may be in the house that has got beer bug. So, yeah, not keen on that whatsoever. And I do worry that the world organizations are going to be using this as a bit of an excuse to simply go through and to sort of bring in some authoritarianism. And so far, they're generally doing what I thought they would do, which is exactly that. Um, also, guys, big shout out to Alan, who has obviously sent me this clip. Thanks, darling. You're amazing. Guys, if you have any clips or anything like that, DM it to me on Twitter, or at me at Twitter. I do check all my mentions, so yeah, definitely. If you find anything interesting, feel free to send it. But let's go through. This is a four-minute a four minute clip. We're going to watch this, and then we're going to talk about some of the scary stuff that's happening in Australia and around the rest of the world. So let's watch this, and let's listen to the speech, because there are a lot of parallels with what's happening right now. Dad, what's wrong with the telly? Good evening, London. Allow me first to apologize for this emergency channel. I do, like many of you, appreciate the comforts of the everyday routine, the security of the familiar, the tranquility, repetition. Bloody hell. I enjoy them as much as any bloke. But in the spirit of commemoration, whereby those important events of the past, usually associated with someone's death or the end of some awful bloody struggle, are celebrated with a nice holiday, I thought we could mark this November the 5th a day that is sadly no longer remembered by taking some time out of our daily lives to sit down and have a little chat. There are, of course, those who do not want us to speak. We think, just let me I think. Expect even now, orders are being shouted into telephones and men with guns will soon be on their way. It's Chancellor Settler. Damn it! Why? Because while the truncheon may be used in lieu of conversation, words will always retain their power. Words offer the means to meaning, and for those who will listen, the enunciation of truth. And the truth is, there is something terribly wrong with this country, isn't there? You designed it, sir. You wanted it foolproof. You told me every television in London. Cruelty and injustice, intolerance and oppression. And where once you had the freedom to object, to think and speak as you saw fit, you now have sensors and systems of surveillance coercing your conformity and selecting your submission. We need cameras. How did this happen? Who's to blame? Well, certainly there are those who are more responsible than others, and they will be held accountable. But again, truth be told, if you're looking for the guilty, you need only look into a mirror. Now, 
we're going to stop it there for a sec and then we'll keep going. Now, that is obviously the lead up to the show. And what he's basically saying is that the government has used fear to go through and to basically bring in these senses, bring in these po- these political views or these these authoritarian methods to to basically make you feel like you're safe. Yeah, you may be safe, but you don't have any freedoms. You don't have any rights. You don't have any ability to protest, to speak up. Does this sound like it might be some of the countries in the current world at the moment? Does it sound like we might be going on those tracks? You know, (laughs) Australia, (laughs) the UK. I don't know about you guys. I'm not saying we're there yet. But if anybody else is starting to see some glaring similarities between what he's talking about there and the real world... Hit me up in the comments. Let me know in the comments section. But let's keep going. Because this is the part where he turns around and he says, If you want to blame somebody, you only need to look in the mirror. This is the point and this is the very important part. Let's keep going. I know why you did it. I know you were afraid. Who wouldn't be? War, terror, disease. There were a myriad of problems inspired to fear got the best of you and in your panic you turned to the now high chancellor adam sutler he promised you order he promised you peace and all he demanded in return was your silent obedient consent inspector you're almost through last night i sought to end that silence ah so basically what he's saying there is at the end of the day you guys you basically gave up your freedoms because of for example, you gave up your freedoms because you were you you didn't feel safe. You wanted to feel safe. You wanted to feel protected. And the only thing it cost you was your freedom. There, there's a saying, and I'm paraphrasing it a little bit here. Those who give up their freedoms to in order to feel safe deserve neither. Now, the reason why we're probably you, you're saying this is you're probably thinking, okay, what's the point? What's the point in all this? Well, Let's listen to the World Health Health Organization and let's listen to what they said on March 20th, 2020. March 30th, sorry, 2020. In most parts of the world, due to lockdown, most of the transmission that's actually happening in many countries now is happening in the household, at family level. In some senses, transmission has been taken off the streets and pushed back into family units. Now we need to go and look in families to find those people who may be sick and remove them and isolate them in a, in a safe and dignified manner. Uh, it's now my great pleasure to invite Lady Gaga. Right, so there he is there. Let's those just... people who may be sick and remove them and isolate them in a, in a safe and dignified manner. Uh, The World Health Organization wants to come into your home and possibly remove family members or remove family members because they might have beer bug. Is anybody else possibly scared about this? And it doesn't end us just here either. For example, let's have a look at this article. Mountain bikers find one thousand six hundred Australian dollars because they went out on a ride. Victorian police slapped a mountain biker with a one thousand six hundred dollar fine. And with the long Easter weekend approaching, it leaves us asking, what are we allowed to do? Pat Royden from Southeast Melbourne was driving his ute to a park for a mountain bike ride when he was pulled over 15 minutes from driving by the police 
who slapped him with a $1,652 fine for unnecessary travel. I had my bike in the back of the car. I was on my own, he told the age. I just headed off to the trail and to have a ride and do some exercise. The police said that it was a routine stop and asked what I was doing. The answer was, I'm about to go for a mountain bike ride alone. I don't think there was anything wrong at all. Only after the matter gained publicly uh, much publicity, uh, publicity was the fine rescinded. But if you're in a different jurisdiction and or similar fine does not receive so much public pressure for your appeal. With the long east approaching blah 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 blah. So here's a mountain biker who was fined $1,600 because he went for a mountain bike ride. Because he was unnecessarily travelling. Now, obviously, at the end of the day, you're probably sitting there thinking, Oh, it's just probably a once-off. Man faces $1,600 fine for working out at an outdoor gym. Despite strict rules in place to combat the spread of beer bug, one man in Melbourne didn't let the new measures get in his way of his workout. While there is now strict social distancing rules in place to combat the spread of beer bug, one man hasn't let the measures stop him. Uh, using the, uh, the man was photographed yesterday working out at an outdoor gym at Melbourne's Point. Uh, using one of the gym's benches to do a series of sit-ups, the man risked an on-the-spot fine of more than $1,600 from Victorian police after fines were introduced last week. The fines were introduced in response to Prime Minister Scott Morrison announcing a raft of measures that restrict public gathering and outdoor exercise. Yeah, uh, that happened apparently. But don't worry, it, it, it's uh, uh, it gets better. I um, let me see. Okay, so I have another link for it, but they want to they wanted me to buy the subscription. Yeah, so maybe this one won't be um, won't be so uh, pan happy. Here's another instance. Police departments across Australia have responded to a learner driver being handed a hefty one thousand six hundred dollar fine for breaching stage three restrictions. Hunter Reynolds, seventeen, was learning to drive in wet conditions in Victoria when her mother supervising in the car with the police officer pulled them over on the weekend. The pair had travelled about 30 kilometres from their Hampton home to Frankston. Despite insisting they have not stopped or come into contact with anybody else, the team was given a 1,652 on the spot fine. Now, obviously, after this garnered much media attention, the police department have waived the $1,652 fine. Of course, obviously, if you don't get your name plastered all over the news, then you're probably going to have to pay it. Yeah, there's that too. And, and here is another article talking about restrictions. When is it permitted to visit the beach in Queensland? Up in Queensland, apparently you can't even visit a beach. Sunbathing or Queensland's beaches, even while maintaining distance with other backpackers or beachgoers, is not permitted. However, exercise including running, uh, running swimming and surfing with fellow household mates or more, more than one person is allowed. So you can go for a jog along the beach, but don't bother sunbaking. 
It's about going out and physically moving, said Queensland Shelf Health, blah, blah, blah. People need to get out and about exercise, it's important needs. Recreational boating. This one's a good one. The Queensland Transport Minister, Mark Bailey, says people can still use their boats in Queensland waters to fish or to travel for essential reasons. You can go out in your boat if you need to fish. I, I've got a mate who's got a jet ski, right? And uh, he said to me the other day that he was going to go. He was going to go out in it. And I said to him, I said, "Well, be careful because up in Queensland they're giving out one thousand six hundred and fifty-two dollar fines for anybody that actually is out on the water." And he's like, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." Anyway, his argument is he's going to take a hand reel um, because that way when he gets pulled over, he says he's going to get fishing. But here's the question I have. If you're on a jet ski, what's the chances of anybody mean within 100 to 300 metres of you? Buckways to none. How exactly are you going to catch a beer bug on a jet ski? Or a, a normal boat. Now, I suppose they don't want boats mooring up together and having huge boat parties. Okay, maybe I can get that. But why does it have to be everybody's boat? Why, why can't it just be mooring boats? Why does it have to be restricting travel in, in Australia at the moment? If you, if you go anywhere that's not shopping or to work or somewhere essential... You can get a fine. Does anybody else think that this is starting to get a little authoritarian? You have the who. Who wants to remove people from your house who might be infected. You have mountain bikers. Uh, you have guys working out at the parks. And women who, 17-year-old girls who go for driving lessons with their mums, all getting $1,652 fines to the point where you can't even go out in your boat in Australia. Because if you do, and it's not essential, you're going to get a fine. I didn't think we lived in communist country, but hey... Let me know what you guys think. Uh, but like I say, this is what I, this is what I've been afraid of. I'm, I'm afraid of the governments using this to clamp down and to erode civil liberties. Now, at the moment, obviously, we have beer bug, and yes, it's a disaster, and it's killing people. And blah, blah, blah. But are these are these rules and regulations? Are they going to go back to normal when the beer bug's gone? And, and if they do go back to normal. Is it every time there's a flu we're going to start giving up our civil liberties just because we might be afraid of catching the flu? Is this going to be the new norm in Australia now? Or is this going to be the new norm with the WHO? Where if, you, if there's a bad flu going around, sorry mate, your mum's got the flu. We're just going to have to take her off to these FEMA camps that have been... Strategically placed all around the world. I know Queensland has one up at Rabina, and I know there's also one in Melbourne as well. And there's, they're all over the place. Over in America, people have documented these FEMA camps. It's kind of scary, guys. It really is kind of scary. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Do you think they're using this as a reason to bring in these new laws? Do you think they're trying to bring in some authoritarian, communist-like country? You know, we have them talking about bringing in, for example, bringing in social crediting systems and stuff like that. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. If this video has been helpful, please smack that like button. If you're new to the channel, welcome and subscribe. Apart from that, guys, we'll see you in the next demonetized video from YouTube. Have a great day.